Hello and welcome back to Spidey Season. While we're all waiting for the release of No Way Home, let's not forget our favourite anti-hero who likes to eat so many snacks in so little time. That's right, Venom takes his diet quite seriously, whether it includes eyes, lungs, pancreas or even chocolate. That appetite creates a lot of problems in his much-awaited sequel and, oh boy, don't even get me started on his psychotic offspring's daddy issues. Anyway, today we're diving deep into symbiote territory as I cover my top 10 scenes from Venom, Let There Be Carnage. If you want to get in on the Spider-Man hype train, then like, share and subscribe to my channel and check out all the content I've released on the Web Slinger. If you want to go up a level, then you can visit my Patreon through the links in the description below. Alright then, let there be entries. He didn't find him. I absolutely loved Michelle Williams giving us a little taste of her symbiote alter ego, but still, we only got one bold guy decapitation. It was great to see her bond with Venom again in this one, even though this appearance was just a short. The scene begins on a funny note as Anne tries to reason with Venom to rescue Eddie after their little quarrel. Yeah, it was a nice touch to show our favourite symbiote inside Mrs Chen. We all love a little variety, don't we? A couple of flirty lines later and our wishes come true because she, Venom, is back in town. I know we don't get to see her powers explicitly, but hey, at least we get Eddie begging Venom and Anne for their forgiveness at the same time. <laughs> it was hilarious. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Kiss her. Uh, you can you can kiss me. No. 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 Oh god, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> The opening scene always sets the tone for the rest of the movie, doesn't it? And this one was no different. We get to dive inside Cletus Cassidy's troubled past by visiting him in an alternate version of Professor X's school for gifted youngsters. His lover Francis is taken away by Officer Mulligan, but then she voices her concern by showing off her sonic powers. Just when we think that this is going to be another one of those introductory escape scenes, boom! She gets shot in the goddamn eye. Damn! I sure as hell wasn't expecting that one, you know. You might be thinking now that this is going to be some kind of revenge film, but there's still time for one more twist. Yep, she survives and is taken to the Ravencroft Institute to be studied for, um, uh, science stuff, I think. Anyway, the pacing of this scene was pretty exciting and it got me super pumped up for the rest of the film. Your old boyfriend's finally getting what he deserves. And the world will be a safer place without him. No! Take your tiny hands off of me! Ah, it was about time we got the titular badass to show up on this list, wasn't it? This one isn't even a full transformation, but it was still pretty cool to watch. Eddie's visiting Cletus again to try and get some information about his victims. It doesn't look like Detective Mulligan likes him a lot, and Venom can definitely sense that. What we get after that is an awesome scene where Venom's head pops out of Eddie and tries to literally chomp on Mulligan. It's a crazy shot and gives off a strong horror vibe, kind of like the poltergeist or alien, but everything gets diffused pretty quickly after good old Eddie gets into an argument with the hungry symbiote. Ha, <sighs> that lady in the toilet had absolutely no clue what was going on there now, did she? I will do it. I don't like you. Let me eat him. You do not deserve nice things. The post credit scene in Venom teased us about this confrontation for a long time and it didn't disappoint one bit. By now, we know that Eddie and Venom fight just about as much as any other married couple out there, so we can expect some kind of gooey interruption. Everything's going as per plan till Cletus starts playing his little mind games on the Plague Reporter about his personal life. It's pretty mean if you ask me, but Eddie can handle this kind of talk. However, Venom's a loving partner and he isn't going to let anyone talk down to his boo like that. What follows is a pretty funny sequence where Venom attacks Cletus, but it ends with the crazed maniac biting on Brock's hand and coming into contact with his symbiote-infused blood. Ah, oh, crap. Cletus creepily talks about his blood-tasting experiences, but I'm not even worried about that because we're pretty sure about what's going to follow, aren't we? Ah, oh, that symbiote blood just looks so off-putting. Stop sucking on it, Cletus. <laughs> Look at all these weirdo high kind of people. 
<laughs> this one really got to me. After their marital problems result in a temporary separation, Venom moves on pretty quickly from Brock by switching from one host to another. He ends up in what looks like a dress-up rave party and oh boy, what we see is freaking awesome. No, seriously, just imagine yourself having a good time at a costume party and then suddenly you've got a seven-foot symbiote chilling next to you. Just look at this, he's got neon rings around him. Oh, come on man, Venom rocks. What's even funnier is that the crowd mistakes him for a simple dude in a slick costume. Well, technically I suppose there is a person inside him, but I mean I don't think it counts, does it? Anyway, Venom starts feeling the vibe, so he snatches the mic from the DJ and gives everyone a speech about love and acceptance. Oh, the big guy's got feelings, how about that? He ends up with a mic drop, and I don't think anyone's ever gonna top that kind of swag in this franchise. I wish you could have seen me tonight. I did. You were waiting for this one, weren't you? Carnage has always been known as the chaotic, murderous monster that just loves to kill and destroy. Well, the cinematic version, he's no different. Cletus is getting the lethal injection that will fulfill his death sentence, but then something goes terribly wrong. His blood starts to do all sorts of weird shit, and Jesus Christ, that's a pretty horrifying transformation. The witnesses escape while they can, but the same can't be said for the poor prison guards. But hey, who cares about those guys? I want to see some carnage. Yeah, there he is. I'll admit that his CGI design does look something out of a video game, but I mean, I can live with that because he just goes ape shit and kills everyone in sight. Man, this is some pretty savage stuff. To top it off, you. I'm right here. Ta da! <laughs> I. I'd like you to meet Carnage. Every villain needs some motivation, so Cletus decides to get his lover Francis out of Ravencroft. This scene starts off with Dr. Camille taunting Shriek about her fate and that she's never going to escape from her institution. Well, let's just say that the doctor spoke too soon because here's Cletus and here's Carnage. Camille gets killed off screen and the psycho lovers reunite with some sloppy affection. Oh. Carnage isn't a fan of love stories, so he gets them out of the institute and into Cletus's new ride. Which I really like that car, by the way. The action sequence that follows is standard CGI and visual effects, but we also get some nice foreshadowing when Carnage realizes that Shriek's powers might turn out to be a problem for him. I've got to admit that it was pretty cool of them to include this kind of conflict because it sets up that final battle nicely. <laughs> Who said romance was dead? Buddy, I'm the only person that took you in when your friends kicked you off the planet Ming Mong because you are a reject! You can get a job down here cleaning toilets! Oh boy, this scene is totally epic. I never knew that I needed to see Eddie Brock face off against his own symbiote partner. I mean, sure, it's funny and stuff, but more importantly, it builds on the tension between the two characters that was already growing rapidly after we see Venom's hatred for poultry meat. I mean, I don't mind a nice fried chicken myself, but each to their own, I guess. Anyway, this is a nice homage to the apartment fight in the 2018 film, and it was satisfying to see Eddie also fight back for once, although we all know who owns who. There's stuff being broken and thrown around and a lot of punching. Jeez, I thought my ex was toxic, but this man, this is something else. The scene ends with the two partners finally breaking up after all the cursing, and I love how Venom absolutely thrashes Eddie's beloved bike to celebrate his freedom. Once again, this is a perfect blend of drama and comedy. No! Yeah! Yeah! Oh yeah! It's rare to find a final battle not making it to the top three scenes of a movie, and this symbiote fight didn't disappoint. First of all, the beginning was freaking hilarious when Venom chickens out after realizing that it's a red one, but then the battle that follows is yet another awesome product of crafty CGI and coordinated stunts. Just like the battle with Riot, Venom puts up a hell of a fight but has to rely on some sonic interference to gain the upper hand eventually. Surprisingly, the constant shifting between the human and symbiote forms doesn't seem forced or intrusive, 
we kind of went with the flow of the battle. There's also that awesome scene where Cletus and Carnage have their disagreements over Shriek, and while it may be a deviation from the comics, I think it just adds on to how dangerous and unreliable Carnage can be. Luckily for Venom though, he gets saved by the bell, quite literally, and ends the action-packed session by simply eating Carnage and then biting Cassidy's head off. Jesus Christ! I, I can't believe he dropped an F-bomb before munching on his snack too. Venom is one savage king. He did not taste good. Fuck this guy! What? What? What, what is it? That guy. If there was any scene that was going to defeat that crazy action sequence, it had to be the post credit scene. Honestly speaking, this single moment makes up for all the weakness in the rest of the movie. I mean, can it get better than this? Venom is in the MCU timeline now, and they actually show Spider-Man and J. Jonah Jameson too. You should have heard the crowd in the theatres when this scene came on. I knew that the multiverse theory meant that anything could happen in the MCU, but oh man, the studio executives are cashing in on it big time. Spidey is finally going to get the venom he deserves. I'm sorry Topher, but your version, well it just wasn't it, was it? Anyway, this is also a brilliant bit of marketing because it confirms Venom's presence in No Way Home. Yes, I'm pumped. And there you go. Those are my top 10 scenes from Venom. Let there be carnage. Do you agree with these picks? Let me know in the comments if you would have done it differently. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe because I'm totally committed to all things Spidey now. And it's